Hello, this is AP Psych Review with Mr. Chuck Shalhorn, and today's uh, particular video is about reinforcement schedules. Now, there are different schedules of reinforcement, and these can become confusing, and so uh, I'm going to try to break these down as uh, simply as I can. First, you have continuous behavior, uh, continuous reinforcement rather, and that's where every instance, instance of a behavior is reinforced. So every time the desired behavior is done, there is a pleasant consequence. There are ratio schedules, and that's where the reinforcement is based on the number of behaviors required. So every third, every sixth, every fourth, every tenth, there's a predetermined number of behaviors that have to occur before the reinforcement is given. There are interval schedules, and the reinforcement is based on time. So when you think of uh, interval schedules, try to think of it intervals as time. When If you do track or swimming, you have intervals, and so after every 25 meters or after every 100 meters, what's your first interval uh, time? What's your second interval time? So intervals are based on time. There are fixed schedules where the requirements for reinforcement are always the same, and then there are variable schedules. The requirements change oftentimes randomly. So I created a, I, I love boxes, I love little graphics. And so you've got um, a ratio based upon behavior, interval based upon time. Fixed, reinforced behaviors after a set number of responses, and variable, uh, provide reinforces after an unpredictable number of responses. And so if you are setting up um, a Skinner box or an operant conditioning box and you've got a rat that you are using, um, you can use these uh, uh, more specific ones. But there are some real-life examples that we'll get to in just a bit. And so this is very clear. You've got fixed ratio, fixed interval, variable ratio, variable interval. When the rubber hits the road is when you have to apply these ideas to real life examples. And you will have at least one question on the AP Psych exam in the multiple choice that talks about schedules of reinforcement. So some fixed ratio examples. Um, giving a child uh, candy every time she picks up her toys every time. So that's continuous as well as to fixed ratio. Um, getting paid after each car gets sold. Um, maybe students given, uh, given a prize after reading 10 books. Or factory workers getting paid by the piece. For example, to get $10 for every widget that they make. So these are fixed ratio. It's based on the behaviors. No matter how long the particular behaviors may take, no matter what, once the behaviors have been done X number of times, they get then paid off, they get reinforced. Fixed interval is going to be based on time. And so doing my job, again, that's the, the desired behavior, um, and then I receive my paycheck the last day of the month. That's a consistent thing. The last day of the month is when I receive my paycheck, fixed interval. Daily mail is the same way. Um, I receive my mail at roughly the same time each day at about noon. So if it's 10 o'clock, I'm not going out to check my mail. But as it gets closer to noon, I start getting, um, uh, you know, looking for the postal truck and, and possibly even going out there. But it's, a, it's going to be based on time, not on a behavior that I do. And then uh, another example would be a course where there are exams every three weeks. Uh, typically what will happen is that as the, the week up to the exam, uh, students will study right before, but then they'll stop until the next round, uh, right prior to the next exam. So what you end up with is, based on the interval of three weeks, that's when the, the behavior of studying is going to occur. Variable interval, now again, these are going to be unpredictable. Reinforcement occurs after a random or unpredictable amount of time. So every time you, and I see my students do this so frequently, checking the phone for text messages. You don't know when you're going to be rewarded with a message, but you continue to check until you do. That's variable interval. Sometimes you might check and you've got one 10 seconds later, but another time you might check for, you know, five times in 10 minutes and you still don't have one. The time is what changes, but you still have to check. And then uh, one last example on this, a parent attending to the cries of a child. Parents will not typically attend to the child each time it cries, but will leave he or she to fuss for a period before attending. And so the parent is allowing the children to, I love that, to fuss um, before uh, the parent gets there and uh, does anything about the crying. 
And then finally, variable ratio examples. As Skinner pointed out, uh, if you want to see variable ratio uh, operating with humans, well, all you have to do is go to Las Vegas or uh, Atlantic City. And, uh, and, and that is with the, the, the classic uh, uh, of winning the jackpot on the slot machine after uh, a changing number of times uh, playing it. You have, to play the you have to play the machine in order to win the jackpot, but you never know when you're going to win. So you keep on playing, and you keep on playing, and you keep on playing. And every once in a while, they'll throw you a few nickels or a few quarters. Um, but you just never know. And so you keep doing the behavior over and over and over until you get it. Now, I know with me, when I play poker with my friends, I don't win every time. But I have to play. I have to do the desired behavior in order to have a chance with it. And, of course, uh, the lottery sucks you in the same way. Uh, if you play the lottery, even, the, uh, even though the odds are very small for winning the big uh, amount of money, what will happen is they'll give you the $2 winners and the $5 winners and the $10 winners. You never know when you're going to get those because you certainly don't get them every time. You don't get them every third time or every tenth time. But you get them at a variable, at an unpredictable time. And so uh, you win occasionally, and so you keep on buying those particular, lar particular lottery tickets. And so that's the end. So be sure to positively re reinforce your own studying for the AP Psych exam. Good luck.